Hello and welcome to Leroy Gaming where today we continue our deep dive look at the classes found in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Uh, today we will be looking at the Magus class as well as all of their related subclasses. Now um, as with all of my videos in this series if you're new to them uh, they are quite extensive so for your convenience I have added uh, timestamps, channel breaks, um, in the description below to help you guys navigate the content. Now, as I've been doing with the last couple of videos, I'm going to continue to provide full on details and read throughs of all the features, uh, for the base class. And then when we go to the subclasses, any new features or changes I will go in depth on, but you'll notice I comment that, uh, when there's repetition, I'm going to kind of reference it and then kind of move on. So you're going to want to reference the specific Magus core class if you want those descriptors in depth. All right, guys, uh, with that being said, and without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in and start taking a look at the Magus. Now, the Ma Magi spend much of their time traveling the world, learning whatever martial or arcane secrets they can find. They might spend months learning a new sword fighting style from a master warrior, while simultaneously moonlighting in the local library. Pouring through tombs of arcane lore. Most who take this path dabble all sorts of lore, picking up anything that might aid them in their search for perfection. So we're talking about a hybrid caster, martial combatant. Now do note, because this class is still, um, it's a hybrid class, but it has those arcane elements, it doesn't get full bab. So you can notice it has three quarter babs. So, you know, a level one, you're going to have zero plus one bonus. Uh, a level two, you're going to have plus one, and then three, plus two, four, uh, plus three. So, uh, again, not quite as good of a progression as a martial character, but definitely better than a pure caster. Now, let's look at the features. So, we're going to start with Magus proficiencies. Magus is proficient all simple martial weapons. Magus is also proficient with light armor. He can cast Magus spells while wearing light armor without incurring the normal arcane spell failure chance. Like any other arcane caster, a Magus wearing medium armor, heavy armor, or a shield incurs a chance of arcane spell failure. A multi-class Magus still incurs the normal arcane uh, spell failure chances for arcane spells received from other classes. Gonna get cantrips. So Magi can uh, cast a number of cantrips or level zero spare spells. These spells cast like any other spells but they are not expended when casting and may be used again. So basically, they're spammable, unlimited use spe level zero spells. You're also going to get detect magic. So detect magic auras of active spells or artifacts or of those that were active recently. Can identify a school of magic to which the uh, spell belongs. And it's also used in dialogue. Now, um, first feature here is arcane pool. So first level, the Magus gains a reservoir of mystical arcane energy that he can draw upon to fuel his power and enhance his weapon. Arcane pool has a number of points equal to one half his Magus level, minimum plus one, plus intelligent modifier. Um, the pool refreshes once per day when the Magus prepares his spells. At first level, Magus can spend expend one point from his arcane pool as a swift action to grant any weapon he holds. A plus one enhancement for one minute, which is 10 rounds this game. For every four levels beyond first, the weapon gains another plus one enhancement bonus for a maximum plus five at 17. The bonus can be added to the weapon stacking of existing weapon enhancements to a maximum of plus five. Multiple uses of this ability don't stack with themselves. So at fifth level, bonuses can be used to add any of the following weapon properties, flaming, uh, flaming Burst, Frost, Icy Burst, Keen, Shock, Shocking Burst, or Speed. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with how these enhancements on weapon would work, so there's normal enhancements that are like, you know, plus one, so plus one to hit, plus one to damage, that can stack. But these other properties, they have a value associated with them, so they may be the equivalent of a plus one or a plus two, but they will give other abilities, like add, you know, 1d6 fire damage, or in one one like flaming burst, which is like potentially 1d6 like AOE uh, contact damage, for example. So it's a ways to kind of pick and choose how you impact those weapons. So that's what it's talking about here. 
And again, you're going to notice this increases. It's noted here, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4 at 13, and plus 5 at 17. Next, you get Spell Combat, which is a big part of what the Magus is all about. So first level, Magus learns to cast spells and wield his weapon at the same time. This functions much like two-weapon fighting, but the offhand weapon is a spell that is being cast. He uses the ability that Magus must have one hand free while wielding a light or one-handed melee weapon in the other hand. As a full round action, he can make all of his attacks with his melee weapon at a minus two penalty. He can also cast any spell from the Magus spell list with a casting time of one standard action. Any attack roll made as part of the spell also takes this penalty. So you're basically simulcasting while you're attacking. Um, now, you're going to level 8 get improved spell combat. So the Magus ability to cast spells that makes melee attacks improves. When using this spell combat ability, Magus receives a plus 2 circumstance bonus and concentration checks. So less likely to be interrupted if you're being hit. You also get greater spell combat at 14. So at 14, Magus gains the ability to seamlessly cast spells and make melee attacks. Whenever he uses the spell combat ability, his concentration check bonus from improved spell combat increases to plus 4. Again, easier time to cast and not get interrupted while getting smacked around. And at 19, you get greater spell access. So at 19th level, the Magus gains access to an expanded list of spells. He learns six spells of any levels from first to six from the wizard's spell list and places them into his spell book as Magus spells of their wizard level. So this is a quite a significant kind of boost here, uh, assuming you don't multi-class because you do have to get to level 19 to get this uh, nice, uh, basically a capstone. Well, almost capstone because true Magus can be the true capstone. All right, moving on. You get Spell Strike. So this again begins at level two. So at second level, whenever a Magus casts a spell with the range of touch from the Magus spell list, he can deliver the spell through uh, any weapon he is wielding as part of melee attack. Instead of the free uh, melee touch attack normally allowed to deliver the spell, a Magus can make one free melee attack with his weapon at his highest base attack bonus as part of casting the spell. If successful, this melee attack deals with normal damage as well as the effect of the spell. If the Magus makes this attack in, uh, in concert with spell combat, this melee attack takes all the penalties, penalties accrued by the spell combat melee attack. This attack uses the weapon critical range, 20, 19, 20, 18 to 20, and modified by the keen weapon properties or similar effects. But the spell effect only deals two times two damage on a successful critical hit while the weapon damage uses its own critical modifier. So what is the benefit of this? Basically, the idea is um, you may, there's limits to how good your two hit is going to be on a melee touch attack. But based off all these different feats and the actual weapons and how powerful the weapons are, it may be much easier to land a hit or it will be much easier to hit with your weapon. And so this kind of piggybacks off that and as long as you're hitting, with a weapon attack, these are going to proc. Uh, and obviously, the only other limitation is that while your weapon may get all these crazy modifications of how much damage it does on crit, uh, the spells them, uh, themselves are um, are going to be limited uh, to two times damage. But, and this is important, you're still more likely to crit. So instead of, you know, only critting on a 20, you may, if you have a keen weapon, for example, and a very specific weapon, you may have a much greater chance to actually crit with uh, all you spell strike. Okay. And then at uh, level 17, you get counter strike. It's, uh, sorry, at level 16. Uh, whenever an enemy within reach of the maga successfully casts a spell defensively, that enemy provokes an attack of opportunity from the magus after the spell is complete. So that's important. So that may be like, you know, they're trying to defensively cast, uh, you know, bark skin or mage armor or any other kind of defensive or reactive uh, spell. So it's a nice little thing for disrupting casters. Um, at level three, you get Magus Arcana. All right, uh, so as he gains levels, a Magus learns arcane secrets tailored to the specific way of blending martial. I don't know if that's meant to be martial prowess, but sans, that's an interesting word. Uh, and magical skill. <laughs> Leave a comment in the description if you 
naturally know what Poussance means uh, without Googling it. Uh, starting at third level, uh, uh, a Magus gains one Magus Arcana. He gains an additional Magus Arcana for every three levels of Magus attained after third level. Unless specifically noted in a Magus Arcana description, a Magus cannot select a particular Magus Arcana more than once. And so you are going to gather three, four, five, six of these. And then your capstone is True Magus at level 20. Okay, so 20th level, the Magus becomes a master of the spells in combat. Whenever he uses his spell combat ability, he does not need to make a concentration check. He cast a spell defensively. Whenever the Magus uses spell combat, he can choose to either increase the DC to resist the spells by 2, grant himself a plus 2 circumstance bonus on any checks made to overcome spell resistance, or grant himself a plus 2 circumstance bonus on all attack rolls. So you'll get a toggle on this um, to give you diverse options on how to buff yourself when using this feature. Next, you're going to get Spell Recall. This is level 4. Fourth level, Magus learns to use his Arcane Pull to recall spells he already cast. With a swift action, he can recall any single Magus spell has already prepared and cast that day by expending a number of points from his Arcana. Arcane Pull equal to the spell level, minimum 1. The spell is prepared again, just as if it had not been cast. This allows you to have more selective options on what spells to cast. So, situationally, if you really, really want to use that spell that you're out of, uh, this lets you recast it at a cost. You're going to get an improved spell recast at 11. So the Magus' ability to recast spells using his Arcane Pull becomes more efficient. Whenever he recalls spells of spell recall, he expends a number of points from his Arcane Pull equal to one half the spell level, minimum one. So potentially, uh, you know, 50% better. Next, because we're not done yet. Bonus Magus Feet. Fifth level and every six levels thereafter. So 5, 11, and 17. Uh, those gain, uh, Magus gains a bonus feat in addition to those gained from the normal advancement. These bonus feats must be selected from those listed as a combat or magic feat. He must meet the prerequisites for those feats as normal. So again, uh, gets you more efficient in an offensive capacity, martially or with magic. Also, and this is a big upgrade uh, and a, a key element as well that builds off of uh, his ability to wear light armor innately without penalty. At level 7, uh, you get arcane medium armor. Magus, uh, Magus uh, gains proficiency with medium armor. Magus can cast Magus spells while wearing medium armor without penalty. But you still incur the penalty through arcane spell failure if you wear heavy armor or use a shield. At level 10, you're going to get Magus Counts, uh, get fight, fighting fighter training. So you count as one half your total Magus levels as his fighter level for the purpose of qualifying for feats. He has the level one fighter, these levels stack. So again, if you choose to go hybrid or if you just go pure Magus, technically at level 20, you would also qualify as a level 10 fighter when it relates to prerequisites for feats. And last but certainly not least, at 13 you get Arcane Heavy Armor. 13th level, Magus gains proficiency with Heavy Armor. And you can cast Magus spells while wearing Heavy Armor without incurring the normal Arcane spell failure chance. Like any other Arcane spellcaster, you still can't use the shield without incurring chance of Arcane spell failure. So uh, that's the only limitation. But again, by the time you get to 13, you're able to be basically a battle mage wearing Heavy Armor. And using all these other great features so that ladies and gentlemen is the base magus class uh, now i do want to uh, kind of quickly show you your level one and level zero spell options here because they're actually pretty extensive so um at level zero you get the main cantrips which are uh acid splash i'm gonna mouse over these for you if you really want to read all the details here you can pause and take a look you get days disrupt undead blair Light, Ray of Floss, Ray of Frost, Touch of Fatigue. I personally really like light in general if you don't have another source so you don't have to be running around uh, with torches. There's, there's a lot of areas that get pretty dark early in the game at least. And the level one, you're going to start with six options. Uh, there's quite a few. So I'm going to again most over all your options for level one. Uh, you're going to get Burning Hands, Color Spray, 
script for that. Force of touch. Enlarge person. Expedious retreat. Flare burst. Grease. Magic missile. Magic weapon. Ray of enfeeblement. Reduce person. Shield. Shocking grasp. Snowball. Stone fist. True strike. And vanish. So those are your level zero and your level one options. Now let us go ahead and go back to the classes and we're going to go over to the first subclass. The first subclass is Armored Battle Mage. So many battle mages focus purely on destructive evocations, but some extend their tactical studies to include use of the tried and true protection of steel. These armored battle mages learn to move and cast spells in even the most restrictive armors and have developed new methods to magically enhance their armor. So let's take a look at the similarities and differences. We're still going to get the normal Magus proficiencies at level 1. Still access to level 0 cantrips as normal. Still going to get detect magic as the base class. You're going to still receive the arcane pool again. Same as the base class. Uh, big difference here is unlike the base class that gets medium armor access at level 7, they get this at level 1. So armored battle mage gains the ability at first level instead of seventh when wearing medium armor. Armored battle mage gains plus four bonus on concentration checks. This stacks with the bonus from the combat casting. So it's above and beyond of what the magus innately gets when it comes to armor. Now I do want to just remind everybody the basic elements that are repetitive, as I'll note. Um, if you want to hear me read over them and provide specific feedback, uh, do check out the timestamp to look at the base magus class. It will provide you with everything. So you are going to get Spell Strike as normal at level 2. And that will also add Counter Strike at level 16. Next, um, starting at level 3, you're going to get Armor Training. So third level in Armor Battle Mage gains Armor Training as part of Fighter Ability. Eighth level, you're going to get Armor Training 2. Thirteenth level, Armor Training 3. And eighteenth level, it gets Armor Training 4. And those uh, are basically going to make it so that um, you incur less, um, basically, penalty to skill checks um, when you wear the specific armor. And also, you can get more maximum dex modifiers from the armor. So for example, heavy armor, innately, for example, you can't get more than plus one dexterity bonus. Uh, eventually, you could technically increase that by an additional four. So that's important. Next, you get spell recall. Okay. And improve spell recall, and this is the same as the base class. You're also going to get bonus magus feats, just like the base class, at 5th, 11th, 17th. You're going to get the access to magus arcana. Again, this is the same as the base class. At 5th, at 9th, at uh, 12th, 15th, or, and rather at 15th. So you're going to get four of these. And you will also get the true magus ability as a capstone level 20. Now, um, you also get some other buffs here. So, for example, at level 5, you get arcane armor plus 2. An armored battle mage cannot spend points from his arcane pool to enhance weapons. Instead, he can expend one point from his arcane pool as a swift action in grant armor. He is wearing a plus 1 enhancement bonus for 1 minute. For every 4 magus levels, he is beyond 1st. Armor gains another plus one enhancement bonus to a maximum plus five at 17th level. These bonuses stack with an existing armor enhancement bonus of maximum plus five, and this does not stack of itself. At fifth level, these bonuses can be used to add any of the following armor special abilities balance, bitter, fortification, heavy, light, or medium, ghost touch, vulnerability, spell resistance, 13, 15, 17, or 19, or spell storing. And obviously, when you see these. 13, 15, 17, or 19, they're going to cost various amounts of points uh, to do it. Um, to add them. So adding these spe special abilities consume an amount of bonus equal to the ability's base price modifier, as I kind of explained. 
In addition, an armored battle mage can grant his armor to energy resistance spell special ability at the cost of a plus three bonus or to improved energy resistance special ability at the cost of plus five bonus. So these are going to be plus five or plus ten resistance to the specific energy source like fire, for example, or acid uh, for that cost. These special abilities uh, these special abilities are added to any of the armor already has, but duplicates do not stack. Right? So again, basically you're modifying the armor instead of the weapon. You're gonna get a level seven, again instead of level thirteen, uh, the ability to um, uh, wear heavy armor without penalty. So again, everything gets accelerated compared to the base magus. So again, here you have the arcane armor plus three. You're going to get fighter training, just like of uh, the base magus. Uh, and the arcane goes to plus four, and then finally to plus five modifier at 17. And finally, you're going to get um, the greater spell axis at 19th. Again, just like the base magus. So if you want that heavy armor wielding super specialized uh, magus there you go next you're gonna get eldritch archer so going in a totally different direction here from defensive to uh the eldritch archer that rains magical attacks down on our foes really basic descriptor but it gets to the point now again do again note that the magus is limited to the three quarters base attack bonus scaling Unlike other martial uh, characters like you know, fighters that focus on archery or Zen monks, etc., you're not you're going to get three quarters bab instead of the full bab. So do note that as a potential limitation. That being said, as far as features, you're going to get normal magus proficiencies, normal cantrips, normal detect magic, and also normal arcane full progression for weapons. Uh, a little caveat that we'll mention in a second uh but um all of these basic descriptors again do check the timestamp for the magus base class if you want to me going over and explaining each of these elements that are duplicated across the classes the subclasses now here's the difference um level one the eldritch archer as probably expected gets range spell combat so instead of a melee weapon Eldritch Archer must use ranged weapons for spell combat. She doesn't need a free hand for ranged spell combat, which makes sense because most of these ranged weapons are two-handed. The Eldritch Archer cannot accept an attack penalty to gain a bonus on concentration checks to cast a spell defensively. Now you're going to get a level 2 ranged spell strike at second level. Whenever an Eldritch Archer casts a spell that calls for a ranged attack, she can deliver the spell through a ranged weapon she wields as part of their attack range attack instead of the free range attack normally allowed to deliver the spell an eldritch archer can make one free range attack or range weapon at her highest base attack bonus as part of casting the spell the attack does not increase the spell's range you're gonna get improved spell casting at eighth and again uh, the magus ability to cast spells and make melee attacks improves when using spell combat ability, you get a plus two circumstance and concentration check, so that's the same with base class. You're also gonna get greater greater spell combat, just like the base class, and greater spell access, the same as the base class. In addition, you're gonna get the full range of Magus Arcana, so you can get one, two, three, four, five, and six uh, uh, levels of this, or tiers. Um, and you're going to get True Magus um, as the base class at level 20. So all of that's the same and you're not losing any uh, uses of the Magus Arcana like you do with the Armored Battlemate. You're going to get Spell Recall at 4th. Followed by at 11 Improved Spell Recall. Again, the same as the base class. You are going to receive bonus Magus feats as well. This is going to start level 5. Get another one at 11. And a final one at 17, again, the same as the base class. As far as armor access, you're going to get arcane medium armor access at level 7. This is the same as the base class. Fighting training at level 10 is the base class. And again, arcane heavy armor access at 13th normal progression. So, you're going to be this hybrid of now range damage, 
I'll probably bow or crossbow user combined with your casting. So again, very cool theme if you're going, especially if you're going for a ranged party. All right, next, let's look at the Eldritch Scion. So unlike typical Magi, Eldritch Scions do not study tomes of magic or spend time learning to combine martial and ma magical skills. Rather, Eldritch Scions find out their spells and abilities come to them instinctively. So it sounds like we got a sporadic caster, which is true. So think Sorcerer meets Magus. So a uh, big difference here is you are going to um, get to choose a bloodline at level 1. Okay, You're going to get... And uh, when it comes to bloodlines, let me read this for you. So each sorcerer, so again, think Magus in this turn, uh, has a source of magic somewhere in her heritage that grants her spells, bonus feats, and additional class skills, and other special abilities. Source can represent a blood relation or an extreme event involving a creature somewhere in a family's past. For example, a sorcerer might have a dragon as a distant relative, or her grandfather might have signed a terrible contract with a devil. Regardless of the source, the influence manifests in a number of ways as the sorcerer gains levels. A sorcerer must pick one bloodline upon taking a first level sorcerer. Once made, you cannot change it. So full of magical powers that screams from release, sorcery is not so much a calling as a blessing or a curse. Some sorcerers, this arcane birthright manifests in subtle and carefully controlled ways, assisting in their manipulation of others or the pursuit of lofty goals. For others, it is wild and unpredictable, the primal explosive lashing out of a power greater than themselves. So at third level and two levels thereafter, a sorcerer learns additional spells derived from her bloodlines. And these are in addition to whatever other spells you get. And we'll take a look at that um, that option potentially here uh, uh, when we uh, choose a bloodline in just a moment and show how this impacts things. So but before we get to that, Let's look at the other features. You're going to get Spell Combat, the same as the base class. You're going to get Improved Spell Combat at 14th level, okay? Um, followed by Greater Spell Combat at 18th, so this gets pushed back a little bit. And Greater Spell Access at 19th, so all of this is a little delayed. Otherwise, the same as the base class. You're going to get an Eldritch Pool, okay? So, uh, and let me see, did they change any of this? It looks like, so the big difference here, so this is the same as the kind of Magus pull uh, of Arcane Energy baseline, but the difference is, it's like Sorcerers, um, the number of points are gonna, that you get access to is half of your Magus level, minimum one, plus your Charisma modifier. So that's the big difference here. You're not gonna be working uh, as a Charisma based as opposed to, um, intelligence base for example so again you're going to see you're going to be able to buff your weapons all the way to the plus five level 17. you're also going to get spell strike this is again like the base class so starting at level three and you're going to gain counter strike at level 16. this is followed by the magus arcana feature again identical to the base class you're going to get the full six uh tiers of it so one at three 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, and you also get that Capstone True Magus at level 20. In addition, you're going to get the bonus Magus feats, uh, like the base class at level uh, level 5, 11, and 17. Also not changing is access to Arcane Medium Armor, so you can wear Medium Armor now without penalties. Uh, you get to act as a, a, a having a fighter training. Just as the base class. And finally, uh, access to arcane heavy armor at 13. So a lot of it seems this outside of the bloodlines right off the bat looks very much like a slightly delayed version of the Magus. So really what it comes down to are those bloodlines. So let's take a look at those now. So you have full access to all the bloodlines. Um, and to give you an example, let's see if it populates it. You're going to get tremendous uh, benefits from this. So, um, what you're going to see here is when you click on it, this gets populated. And you're going to get tremendous additional features. Now, I am going to make a separate video 
on the bloodline benefits uh, for this class because this would make this video extensively long but I do want to give you guys the opportunity to get the full details so if you are interested in seeing all the specific benefits of every single bloodline that's uh, that I'll go over right now just as a quick note uh, do check out that other video I will make sure to link it but to give you an example just how many options we have is we got abyssal bloodline arcane celestial all the different dragons uh, so chromatic as well as uh, uh, the, the good dragons like brass copper and gold for example all four of the elemental bloodlines fey bloodlines infernal bloodlines serpentine bloodlines and undead bloodlines and again i will make a separate video linked that really does, uh, shows you what this is all about and all the benefits so check out that video all right perfect let us go back now continue to hex crafter okay so a hex crafter magus has uncovered the secrets of using his arcane pool to recreate which hexes these magi magi can hex friends or and foes curse those uh, they strike and expand their spell selection to include many curses or spells so really we're looking at now you're crossbreeding with like a witch as far as the features go so let's see at the similarities similarities and differences we're going to start with magus proficiencies okay and these right here are going to be the same going to still get access to your cantrips as normal and detect magic now you're going to get your arcane pool starting at level one yet again and that's going to expand all the way uh so level five plus two level plus three at nine plus four at 13 and plus five at 17 that does not change you also get spell combat starting at level one does not change uh and get greater spell combat at eight Followed by greater spell combat at 14. And finally, at 19, you get greater spell access. So that does not change. In addition, you get spell strike. This again does not change. You're going to be at level 2, and you're going to also get counter strike at 16. Moving on, you're going to get Magus Arcana. Um, this, you're going to get the first one at level 3. And then you're going to get, basically, based off these notes, you're going to, um, this gets modified in just a second, as we'll note, uh, to include Hex Arcanus. But notice, at level 3, you get initial access to this feature. You're also going to get Magus, True Magus, at level 20 as the base feature. Now, spell-wise, this is starting level 1. Hex Crafter Magus adds all spells of 6th level or lower that have the Curse Descriptor to his spell book. So as you level up, you gain access to um, your different levels of spells. You're also going to get all these hex uh, uh, spells, for example, like witches would get access to. But you just don't get the other spells that do not have cursed descriptors. Okay, so that's one big plus. You're going to get your bonus magus feats. This is as normal. One at 5, one at 11, and one at 17. But here's the modifier. You're going to get Hex Arcana starting at 6. So Hex Crafter may select any Witch Hex in place of Magus Arcana. 12th level, the Hex Crafter may select a Hex or Major Hex instead of Magus Arcana. At an 18th level, you can select a Hex, Major Hex, or Grand Hex. So this is a bit of an optical illusion. Technically, at all these levels, you could just keep getting your Magus uh, features at all the points here. But in addition, or instead of, you may be able to select progressively more powerful hexes. And why not? I mean, more often than not, you're probably going to want to do that if you are playing in Hex Crafter. But note that you do not have to. You get the choice of either or, giving you more flexibility. Now, at level 4, you get a Hex Magus. So the Hex Crafter Magus gains access to a small number of witch hexes. The Hex Crafter Magus picks one hex from the witch's hex class feature. He gains the benefits uh, or uses that hex as if it were a witch of a level equal to his magus level. So it replaces uh, spell recall. So you're not going to get the diversity of hexes that a witch does. But the ones you do have will be just as powerful potentially. Um, so that's a big difference. And obviously 
goes hand in hand with the hex uh, hex uh, options from Hex Arcana. Now you do not give up Arcane Medium Armor Axis. That's still at level seven. You still get Fighter Training at level ten, and you still get Arcane Heavy Armor at thirteen. So your ability to wear armor uh, is not limited, uh, which again unique because normally witches they don't get to wear any armor. So this is going to really buff up your of options. Uh, as we mentioned, this is just uh, referencing to the ability of gaining a major hex at 10 as an option and at one grand hex opportunity at 18. So right right there and there, gentlemen, uh, is going to be your uh, hex craft options there. Now let's take a really quick look. I want to see the level one in theory, you might be able to add, uh, let's see if there's any witch opportunities for spells. So again, gonna get all your normal uh cantrips i want to take a quick look for you guys if level one get any curses i don't believe there's going to be any at level one so at level one as of right now uh you're not going to get any of that access it's gonna you're gonna have to wait till higher levels um as noted okay um so that right there is the hex crafter let's go ahead and look at last and not least the sword saint and so the Sword Saint uh, spends his life focusing his training and med uh, meditation into a raptorious perfection of the use of a single weapon, which is us usually but not always a sword, channeling his arcane might through it in a dizzying and deadly dance beyond the abilities of even the greatest of mundane warriors. Okay, so probably guess super <laughs> sword weapon focused here. Now again, do note the limitations of the three-quarter bab is still there, um, so we just want to keep that in mind. You're gonna, as normal, get access to cantrips, detect magic, uh, but the first difference is chosen weapon. So a sword saint is proficient in simple weapons and in a single martial or exotic weapon of his choice. Sword saint is not proficient with armor or shields and suffers normal arcane spell failures chance when casting magic spells with, while armored. At first level, Sword Saint gains weapon focus of the chosen weapon as a bonus feat. So, huge difference. Every other magus uh, subclass, including the core class, has access to the armor traits. We're sacrificing that and kind of going all in on the offense uh, with this chosen weapon element. Now, you're going to still get your normal arcane pull. That's going to progress to be able to buff weapons all the way to plus 5 at 17. So that does not change. You're going to get spell combat again starting of level 1. That is the same as well. And you're going to get improved spell combat at 8. And at 14 greater spell combat. Now, another difference is you're going to get canny defense at level 1. So wearing light armor or no armor. Most likely no armor here. Yielding his chosen weapon. And not using a shield. Again, all things that you're probably not going to want to do with a Sword Saint. A Sword Saint adds one point of intelligence bonus, if any, per Magus class level as a dodge bonus per armor class. If a Sword Saint is caught flat foot or otherwise denied her dexterity bonus, she also loses bonus. So, this is a big difference. Because again, plus one point of intelligence bonus her magus level as a dodge bonus so you get 20 intelligence that's plus 5 ac uh and it's going to stack with your dexterity bonus so this is a way that you're going to be able to make up for not having armor similar to kind of how a monk um is able to add their wisdom modifier or depending on the subclass charisma modifier that stacks of dex modifier this is big but notice it is a dodge bonus so you can't use like a you know uh a, like a ring or a piece of armor or something that has it's not going to stack with that dodge bonus um you're going to get superior reflexes at 11 so a sword tank can make a number of attacks of opportunity and around equal to intelligence modifier minimum one it stacks with the combat reflexes feet why is this important well combat reflexes is going to give you additional opportunity attack options depending on your dex modifier but this is saying it would stack now that may be overkill if, a, if you have plus three dex from dex and plus four plus intelligence, that's seven potential attacks of opportunity per round. Unlikely you're going to ever use that many uh, attacks of opportunity, but that is how this works. 
And then you're going to get perfect reflexes at 19. So 19th level, Sword Saint's initiative roll is automatically a natural 20. So these guys get to jump on just about everybody. Very, very fast. Very, very nimble. Uh, so jumping around like a, I don't know, almost like a Jedi in a way. That's that's how I would imagine them. So they're super fast, super powered up, lightsaber-like weapons. Um, just open cans of whoop-ass. Um, now your spell strike. There's some additional elements here. You're going to get your base spell strike feature. That is normal. Uh, but you're going to get perfect strike at level 4. When a sword saint hits with his chosen weapon. Again, a lot of this is going to, you're going to, going to hear over and over again. That chosen weapon is key. So this is something you want to research in advance. Knowing what kind of weapon you're going to dedicate yourself. You can spend 1 point from the arcane pool in order to maximize the weapon damage. Don't roll for damage. The weapon deals maximum damage. This affects only the weapon's base damage dice, not additional damage from sneak attack, magical weapon properties, spell strike, or critical hits. The sword saint confirms a critical hit. He can instead spend two points from his arcane pool to increase the weapon's critical multiplier by one. So I'm assuming this is going to work like a toggle because, you know, you're working kind of in real time at the game and it's auto-calculating elements. But again, this is very powerful maximizing damage. Um... Especially once you get some, you know, you get some, uh, get some nice, high quality weapons. You're going to get fighting training. Now you're going to get this early as noted. So this is starting at 7th level. Sword Saint counts the Sword Saint level minus 3 as his fighter level for the purpose of calling for feats. If he has levels in fighter, these stack. Now this, it's interesting. He gets it earlier. Normally, Magus gets it at 10. But it says it's Saint's level minus 3. So... At level 7, it really, unless this is miscalculated, and it's meant to be plus 3, which I don't think it is, uh, you don't get as much benefit from that. So really, at 7th level, you're like the equivalent of 4th level fighter for those feats. Uh, you're going to get critical perfection at 9. So 9th level, Sword Saint adds his intelligence bonus on critical hit confirmation rolls with his chosen weapon. So again, critical hit confirmation is, let's say you only crit on a 20, you're gonna need to hit that 20 uh, but then you have to basically double clear it with bonuses any applicable bonuses from feats or from this that's more likely to crit if you miss that secondary roll you still do normal damage you don't miss but you don't get the critical damage multiplier uh, so this is more likely for you to crit quite a bit more so in addition the sword saint may use his magus level in place of his base attack bonus to qualify for any feat in which it is a prerequisite this is important because some of these uh, feats will say you need a bab of five so a martial class gets full bab so at level one it's bab one level two two so at level ten bab ten three quarter uh bab is quite a bit different for the magus so at level four you are only bab three uh at eight you're only uh you're going to be six so you fall behind now this allows you again if you have a feat let's say you're level eight you're, uh, and some reason you needed level eight bab to get a feat instead of being bab six which you are for the calculation instead have a bab uh eight for example oh, sorry nine here because you get this level nine so let's use level nine as an example you would be uh level nine for the requirements of that feat only so that's key to help make up for the fact that they're quarter bab you're going to get lethal focus at 13 when a sword saint is attacking a flat-footed opponent, he adds his intelligence modifier on damage when his chosen weapon. That's nice too. <laughs> so you catch somebody off guard at really high levels, obviously with the perfect reflexes, high initiative. Um, this could really happen quite a bit. Um, you're also going to get counter strike at 16. So this is the same as the uh, as the normal magus. And at level 20, it's different. Instead of true magus, you get weapon mastery, 20th level. Any attack a sword saint makes of its chosen weapon automatically confirms all critical threats and has their damage multiplier increased by plus by one. That is huge. So weapons that are plus two become plus three and so forth. So you don't even have to worry about confirming. If you get like a keen weapon, like you can get, get the keen modifications through a keen weapon um, to really increase the chance of uh, your range for your crits, you can be just destroying things. Again, it's a level 20, so you're already god tier at that point but it is thematically very very cool and potentially very good now you're also going to get magus arcana as a normal class feature starting at level three 
uh, continue to five. But you're going to get lightning draw at seven. Seventh level of sword chain applies his intelligence modifier as well as dexterity modifier on initiative rolls. So again, before getting that natural money, you even get the benefit of getting plus dex and plus int on initiative. So again, you're going to already starting at seven going lightning fast, which is good. Um, so you can get the jump on people. And then it continues the normal magnet, Magus Arcana feature. Uh, and then lastly, you get bonus Magus feats as normal at 5, at 10, and at 17. So thematically, super cool. Uh, again, in my mind, I imagine this as the Pathfinder Jedi class. Uh, just very, very cool thematically. And you could potentially make it quite a bit powerful as well. We'd love to... Uh, hear you guys' feedback. What do you think about these Magus uh, subclasses? Do you like them like I do? Do you have a favorite? Are there ones you think are not really as powerful as they should be? Love to continue the conversation with you guys below. Uh, again, thank you for supporting my little new channel here. Uh, it's very niche, but I've been very excited to see everybody that's joined over the last couple weeks here. I uh, hope to continue making more and more content for you across this game and then other games as well. Uh, so again, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you want to see more of my uh, content more readily. And if you want to help me out, it is the best thing you can do. Uh, as always, it is Leroy with Leroy Gaming, and I will see you guys next time.